Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Watch how I make this dollar store sticker wallpaper <laughs> into a beautiful mermaid tumbler. This is some vinyl that I hydro dipped at an earlier time and I thought it looked like pretty blue water. So I'm going to use it for this on a split cup and then these little um, decals, they're wall decals I purchased at the Dollar Tree of Little Mermaids and Ocean Critters. So I'm going to do a split tumbler. I'm going to split it um, with half of this water and half white. Um, you can see on that hydro dip it did have kind of some splatting of some purple that I didn't really care for. So I'm going to cut that off. If you guys want a tutorial on how I hydro dipped my vinyl, this was just white matte vinyl that I used a hydro dip method on. And it's dried. I've had it forever. I just didn't know what to do with it. So I'm going to line my vinyl up on this tumbler. This is a skinny, um, I believe it's a skinny 30 ounce um, duo straight tumbler from Stainless Depot. I'll leave everything in the link below, in a link below um, with all the products that I use. And I'm just measuring it here with some tape to um, find the center and split it um, equally. I'm just going to put the vinyl on, um, get it exactly the way I want it, and then I'm going to go ahead and epoxy over this. This tumbler I did um, sand, wash, and then spray paint a matte white before beginning this. These new duo tumblers from um, Stainless Depot are really nice. They have two lids. One's a water bottle lid and the other is a regular tumbler lid and they both screw on so I really like the screw on lids. This tumbler doesn't have a taper so that makes it really nice. Not that it really matters with this um, vinyl that I'm using. It doesn't have a pattern that you'd have to match up anyway since I'm doing a split. Um, it really didn't make much of a difference. Sorry for the background noise. I'm sitting outside. I thought the birds would be nice to listen to, but someone's mowing their grass. <laughs> so I hope you don't mind. It's summer, so, well, almost summer. Little summer ambiance for you. So I'm just peeling that back, uh, backing off of the vinyl as I go to try to avoid any bubbles and just really trying to get a good adhesion of that vinyl um, sticking down on my tumbler. If you get any little bubbles, you can try to work them out. Um, you can peel that vinyl back. This is a um, semi-permanent or non... I, I'm not sure what it's called. It, you can peel it up. <laughs> Words are not coming to me very well today. I hope you excuse me. But you can peel it up and work the bubbles out. Or you can take a little straight pin and just poke um, the bubble and work it out that way. So I'm just, first I'm going to cut off that excess, but you'll see what I um, do here in a minute. I'm going to um, trim those edges. I just wanted to get it cut so I can get a really good uh, seal there. You don't, I personally do not like to have my vinyl go completely to the rim or completely to the bottom. I like to um, cut a little edge so that I could get a good seal with my epoxy. So I'm going to use a sharp X-Acto knife and just hold it down on my table and hold the cup on the table and just press firmly and it comes up beautifully. It's a straight edge. And now I'm just going to make sure that that's really, really down there good so it doesn't peel up when I do my epoxy. And here on the area where I have it taped off, um, that tape is making a straight edge for me, which makes it really easy to trim that off. I am going to outline this with some nail tape later. So I'm okay if that edge is just a tiny bit off. It's not a big deal. Um, you'll see at the end this ends up being like a collage cup. So you wouldn't be able to tell anyway. So once that's all adhered well, I'm going to take it to my turner and apply epoxy. And this is the next day the epoxy was applied. I didn't add anything to the white area, but you can see that that is nice and flat. Um, you don't have to epoxy it for this next before this next step. I just liked it 
to do it because then I have a nice smooth surface and I don't have to worry about my vinyl getting messed up. So I'm going to do a tacket method with some pretty holographic fine glitters. I'll list those in the description below. I'm going to tape off that vinyl that I laid down so that I can get a nice clean edge with my glitter. And I'm going to do an ombre of three colors. Ombres are really easy to do when you're doing fine glitters. At least that's what I think. Um, they seem to really blend well. And I'm going for similar colors that are in the little decals that I'm going to apply. And I'll show you them here in a minute. But like I said, I'm going to list everything in the description box below so that if you want to purchase these glitters, you can. But, you know, I don't know if these decals are still available at the Dollar Tree. I bought them about a year ago and I knew I wanted to do something with them. I just didn't know what. And then I had the bright idea to put them on a tumbler. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm going to come in and actually glitter that bottom later. But for now, I'm just doing the side. So that tacket is nice and tacky and dry. And I'm using this pretty um, holographic find called Hello Tiffany from the Glitter Chimp. I can't remember the names of all these colors, to be honest, right at the moment, but they'll be in the description. Now since I pre-colored this with a white base, I do have to do two coats of the glitter um, to help it to stand out. If you want to avoid doing two coats, you could um, prep your cup with the colors of the glitters. However, um, when I started this tumbler, I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do yet, and that's why I prepped it white. And I, I tend to do that a lot. I always prep my tumblers white because I was like, I'm like, oh, well, I'll figure it out as I go. That's just kind of how I craft. I, I plan things to an extent, but usually I just kind of go by the seat of my pants, if that makes sense. <laughs> This blue actually ends up being a little bit too pale for my liking, so I'm going to go in on the second coat with a different blue, and you'll see that here in a few minutes. So for the ombre, I'm just um, kind of angling the tumbler back and forth. Right now it doesn't look like very much of an ombre, but you'll see once I burnish it down how well that they um, these glitters really play really well together. I'm just adding more layering to get the ombre um, effect here and that's why I'm doing that and I'm going to go in and burnish it here in just a second and you'll see how pretty these glitters are once they lay flat but you can tell that I did use white below it because the glitters are pretty soft and if you like that it's perfectly fine it is really pretty but I do go in with a second coat. Now if you have this issue like I'm having here, I'm having to kind of rub, rub, rub that green down. I think my tacket was maybe a little thick in that area. If this happens to you, don't get too discouraged. Just keep rubbing it and it will the glitter will lay flat. But it is best to wait until that um, tacket is dried and tacky. But there you go, you can see it worked really well. So I'm going to go back in with some more tacket over top. You can go directly over top of that glitter. It isn't going to move anymore. Um, it's been burnished down, so it's not going anywhere. That's the nice thing about the tacket method. I kind of added way too much glitter here, or glue here. Um, so try to avoid that. <laughs> going with a lighter coat than I did. I think I ended up kind of wiping some off. 
So that's nice and tacky again, and I'm going to go in with that glitter. I do switch my blue out to a kind of periwinkle blue. Um, it just it blends better with the purple and the aqua color that I have there, and um, it just stands out better than that baby blue did. And this is that periwinkle color. I believe it's from Starcraft. I had I had purchased like two or three of their glitters recently, and they're really pretty and um, good quality. So I recommend them. I like to try different glitter companies and just uh, test them out because I love glitter. <laughs> You can see my um, the glitter is getting a little bit darker on that second coat, so that's great. And I ended up not having to do a third coat because I was happy with the outcome. Now my lighting is a little bit bright um, when I film, so when I burnish it down, the glitter may not look as dark as it ends up being. But I think in some of the other light later, you'll be able to tell uh, how much coverage those glitters gave. So two coats isn't too bad. And doing the tacket method with the fine glitters really helps to give you a smoother surface when you lay down your resin. You don't have to do as many coats over it. So I'm just going to burnish that down. You can see that it, you can see it a lot better now. Like I said, that purple looks really pale on the camera, and I think it's just my my ring light's pretty bright. It's just washing it out a little bit. Make sure you um, really burnish down the edges that are by the tape so that you don't have any little parts sticking up. And I'm going to peel this tape off immediately after burnishing this down. So pretty. So I'm going to peel up that tape and then I'm going to burnish down the edges a little bit more just to make sure that I don't have any um, little pieces that are sticking up because that does change the color. And you can see how pretty that is. So this is after another layer of epoxy. So it's the next, the day after I put a layer of epoxy over the whole tumbler. It's so pretty. And at this point, you can really do anything you like. You can apply a name, a decal. I'm going to do kind of a collage method, a layered collage method. So I have these little mermaids, and they're so stinking cute. They look like little um, watercolor kind of painted mermaids. Now I was trying to figure out how exactly I wanted to put them. They're, they're pretty big. That's why I had to use a 30 ounce tumbler. And I definitely would not have put these stickers on a, a curved tumbler. It would have been too much of a headache because they don't really stretch. They're kind of more on a paper, sticker paper, I guess. Um, as opposed to like a vinyl. They're for the wall, but um, I guess they're supposed to be peel and stick and then like removable, but I, when I was starting this, I put one of the mermaids down, a different mermaid than I ended up using, and it wasn't in a spot that I liked. <laughs> and I tried to peel it up and it all ripped, so... I guess they wouldn't be reusable if they were on the wall. You could just peel them back off. So this mermaid had some uh, fabulous hair and a big old tail, and it kind of overlapped the other mermaid. But that's okay. I'm going to go in with my X-Acto knife and trim that up. And it's okay if you cut over top of that epoxy. Just be careful. Um, you don't want to scratch your vinyl or the glitter underneath, but you can't, you know, it's pretty forgiving. So I did my little mermaids. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, I didn't, I wanted some type of separation between the vinyl and the glitter. So I'm going to use this nail tape that I purchased on Amazon. I'll leave that in a link below. It's really narrow, self-sticking nail tape. It has really pretty colors, um, metallics and 
holographic and um, like a shimmery metallic or matte metallic, I guess. Um, and they're really easy to cut with my X-Acto knife. So I wanted to use that just to give it a little extra bling, kind of to frame out that vinyl part um, where the glitter butts up to it on the top and the bottom and the sides. And I'm going between the Little Mermaids like they're on top of it. I probably would have done this before the mermaids, but then I would have had a little kind of a line there underneath the decal, so that's why I'm going in with this. And that's easy enough to trim. Like I said, I don't always have a plan when I go in with my tumblers. Sometimes I just go with what looks good, and well, that's the way it goes. But the, doing this um, around the mermaids really does give it, you know, kind of some 3D depth. Have any of you ever made collage tumblers before? I've made quite a few and I really enjoy making them. They're fun. Um, they take, take some practice, but I used to do scrapbooking, so that's what this kind of reminds me of, layering the scrapbooking and the different elements. So it's kind of like my collage scrapbooking on a tumbler. <laughs> Isn't that, um, that vinyl looks so pretty. It looks so much like water behind her. I'm really glad that I did finally found a use for this vinyl that's been sitting in my house for about, it. I think, a year. I did this about a year ago. So, So in case you're wondering, this tumbler has been approved by Little Miss Aurora and Miss Emerson because, you know, it is mermaids. <laughs> they both saw it and said, Mimi, I love your tumbler. <laughs> High praise indeed, right? It just reminded me of a summer day um, at the pool. So. <laughs> So now I'm going, I, I love the decal, but it needs something. So I'm going to go in with some of the same glitter that I used in the tumbler, plus this pretty gold. And I'm going to paint some Mod Podge in some different areas and lay down the glitter to kind of match the, um, the sticker. To give her a little bit of bling. She's a pretty little mermaid. She needs a little bit of bling in her life, just like all of us do. I'm just taking a little bit of Mod Podge on my brush and just lightly brushing in some different areas. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this is kind of a free-flowing watercolor style sticker. And um, I do recommend kind of putting a light layer on because that way the glitter doesn't get too lumpy. And I'll just let you watch this process. I'm just choosing different little areas that I want to accent and add some bling to. I didn't want to get too crazy and cover the whole thing.
So once I'm done painting all the little glitter areas that I want, I'm going to brush this off once it's dry and get all the little stray pieces of glitter. And then I'm going to spray that really well with a uh, the Rust-Oleum Clear. And then I'll epoxy it. So this is epoxied. Um, you can see the pretty little glitter accents. I wanted to do kind of little ridges with this white pen around my um, mermaids, kind of like there's little waves around her or little um, motion. I don't know. It gave it a little bit of um, dimension and texture. Um, <laughs> so I'm just kind of doing freehand little waves around her, um, kind of on the outline area. Um, really no rhyme or reason. I just did it until it looked good. It added a little bit of um, interest there. So when you're doing collage tumblers, you want to do your decals, um, and if you use water slides, on different layers. So you, um, the little uh, mermaid has a layer of resin over, and I'm going to go in with some more decals here in just a few minutes. And then I will glitter those also, and then put resin over those. And then if I choose to do another layer of vinyl stickers or um, anything like that, I would put another layer of resin over those. So you just keep building it up, and it gives it a nice 3D effect and a nice smooth layer for your next um, stickers to go on without having the bumps of the vinyl underneath, if that makes sense. I hope this is making sense for you guys. I thought the little um, paint pen marks just gave it something, something nice and um, has a cute little design around the mermaids. So I'm going to put some more little decals on because these little critters are so cute. There's a little cat mermaid <laughs> and a little uh, seahorse unicorn, which that's when he is right there, and a little uh, sea turtle unicorn. <laughs> They're so cute. I'm just putting these in the little spaces and I'm okay if they overlap a little bit um, with the mermaids because then it'll look like they're kind of swimming in front of them. I was trying to get as many of these decals on the tumbler as I can since I am using it as an um, example of what you can do with the wall decals on your tumbler. Plus, I love the little shells and the starfish. They're so cute. And of course, I'm going to go in and bling these up with some glitter like I did before. Because, you know, you have to. And don't forget the bottom. I'm going to put this pretty shell on the bottom. Fits perfectly. So these are the glitters I'm going to use for this part because these little characters had different colors than the mermaids. Some gold, a pastel um, pink, and a pastel lavender, and a chunky mix of kind of turquoise. Turquoise and silver mix is in that little glass um, salt shaker dot jar. I thought it'd give a cute little dimension. So just like with the mermaids, I'm going to paint on some Mod Podge and sprinkle the glitter where I want. I'll let you enjoy this part.
So like I said, after you're done um, glittering your tumbler, make sure that you brush off the excess once the glue is dry and you spray it really, really well with Rust-Oleum Clear spray paint or any type, uh, brand clear that you'd like. And then I do go in with one more layer of resin on this tumbler. And here is the finished beautiful beauty. She's so pretty. Um, there's so much depth. The camera's not really picking up how incredibly cute this tumbler is. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. I honestly did not know it, how it was going to finish. <laughs> But I love that blue marble background and the glitter background with the pretty little sea creatures. And I know that it looks like a little girl tumbler, but you know what? I think she's pretty amazing and I love her and I would use her. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Step out of the comfort zone and go get some things from the dollar store and see what you can uh, create. If you like my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give me a comment if you have any questions or if you just love my videos. Happy crafting everyone!